Every game series has its ups and downs, but Jack and Daxter is solid. All of the games are of a great quality, and it was consistent, even with developers other than Naughty Dog coming in to make Daxter. So then what the fuck happened here? Jack and Daxter The Lost Frontier was developed by High Impact Games who'd previously worked on some Ratchet and Clank titles. Good for them. While the project had started at Naughty Dog, the game was handed off due to development on the Uncharted series taking priority. So before we all go pointing the blame towards High Impact, we need to remember, this was also Naughty Dog's fault. Who are these people? Oh, that's Kira. Looks nothing like her, but okay. Jack looks a bit odd and got a new voice actor. I'm not a fan of this at all. Look, I found this guy. Or, well, maybe he found me, but anyway, he seems pretty good with mechanics and I think he could help us. The story has the crew traveling to the brink, the edge of the world. Neat idea, although we need to remember, this place only exists because these furry fuckers got bored of building, you know, existence. They're travelling out here to look for Eco as it's in shortage, causing the world to rip apart. Where have I heard that before? Depleting resources, wars for fossil fuels, sky pirates, oh yeah, Assassin's Creed 4. Pirates try to kidnap Kira before Daxter blasts the ship's Eco tanker away and they have the safest crash landing in the history of crash landings. This story has some serious potential. Levels taking place on the edge of existence? But then the actual game happens. Hey, take this staff and use it only for the first level because once you walk through this tutorial and we get out of here, you can attach gun mods to it, just like some other games I'd sooner be playing. The game looks okay, but the colour palette mainly consists of washed out browns, greens and greys. How did they manage to make a vibrant forest area look like shit? Haven City was all grey, yes, but that was a dystopian city. Go outside of it and the depressing colours don't follow you, do they? The gameplay also feels... different. It's not really bad, but it's not good either. It kind of feels like Jack and Daxter, but it also doesn't at the same time. I don't know. I don't know what they were thinking when they come up with this shit! The second fucking mission sees us protecting this spaceship from the pirates, and good lord, the flying sucks so bad. It reminds me of the free range sections in Star Fox 64, and while I praise them in my review, looking back, they're a pain in the ass. Haha, <laughs> kawinky dink? It's not that they're terrible, just tedious. The ship controls annoyingly and is one of the slowest things I've ever seen. Look at this high-impact, action-stacked gameplay featuring the slowest chase scene ever conceived. You get other planes as you progress through the story. Each is more worthless than the previous. You can purchase upgrades for these ships, which is required if you want to get through the endless amounts of plane warfare. Platformer? 50% of this game is flying! Why do all these fucking games claim to be platformers when half of their gameplay takes place in shitty vehicles? By the way, 40% of this game is platforming. Oh, and the other 10%? Do you really want to know what it is? Dark Daxter mode. Are you fucking kidding me? In a game where Jack can't transform into Dark Jack because of unstable eco, why the fuck can Daxter turn into this tacked on, shitty asshole of a mistake? The less said about these Daxter parts, the better. So I'll make this quick. <gasps> Daxter spins around like the Tasmanian Devil, solving puzzles and killing shit. Enemies get stuck, and the whole thing is worse than blasting <coughs> chunks of barbed wire. They're shit, they serve no purpose, and the fact that all of the characters shrug it off like it didn't fucking happen gives me even less of a reason to give a rat's fucking ass about it. As for the rest of the gameplay, it's boring. No interesting enemies, boring environments, and just a pure, uneventful gameplay experience. 
As already mentioned, Jack's staff is actually a gun, and we're back to the Jack 2 version where we only get four mods. Good. All of them aside from the grenade launcher are the same ones that we've already had. However, Jack is back to using various eco powers. By collecting Dark Eco, instead of turning into Dark Jack, we give it to Kira in exchange for power-ups. Only when it doesn't make the game fucking freeze, resulting in a cardiac arrest. I'm all for leveling up Jack and unlocking new abilities, but I thought eco was unstable and couldn't be used. Which explains why Jack uses various eco powers such as shields, making platforms appear, and firing uh, this thing that can be shot for more damage. But I thought eco was unstable and couldn't be used. The classic video game horse shit is back, where the character of the player has to go through a long level, overflowing with enemies, only to find another character already at the end, asking what took you so long. How did you get here, you stupid eco-sage bitch? Did you have to outrun boring lava, teleport past shit, get shit shot at you and destroy a dumb boss straight from Dr. Robotnik's wet fantasies? Oh no, I just spawned here because no one likes escort missions. Well, no one likes you! Let's talk about the dumb story you won't care about being spoiled. After saving these guys at the start of the game, they make us do their shit gun course before Captain Phoenix actually kidnaps Kira for realsies this time. After chasing him down, we start to work with him. Because Kira said so. Whipped! Whipped! Pussy whipped! Does she know something we don't? Because this goes on for half the game, with no explanation. Doing various missions that require going backwards and forwards and slowing down time and a whole lot more of this plain crap. We eventually find out that the guy from the start is evil because he did dark eco experiments and Captain Sky Pirate used to work with him, but now he doesn't. Great, I suppose. But you know what else is fucking great? This mission where we need to defend his ship from these three towers. We take out all of the turrets, which is easier said than done. They fire a missile, which Daxter gets on. Some rubbish button mashing like everywhere else in the game. Daxter drives the missile back, jumps off, and a tower is destroyed. Do that two more times with about 5,000 more things trying to rip you a new dick hole, and there you go. 30 minutes of my life gone. Um, I have here written in my notes that missile defense sucks. Yeah, you don't fucking say! More running around and doing stupid shit, mainly this shit, but also a bit of this shit. We come to the end of the game. We go to the Earth's core to find Eco. Captain Sky Pirate Phoenix Games is betrayed by his not-so-loyal crew, except for this guy, because now he's good, apparently. We travel to this guy's town, he turns into Dark What's-His-Face, and we destroy him in a boss fight with no music. At me! Fun. The music is nothing to write home about in this game, but it's better than nothing. So this is the final boss, right? No. Of course not. He flies away in his spaceship. We chase him for what feels like five hours, and then... Nothing. No fucking payoff. What a fucking surprise. We go back to the ship, only to leave the ship again, which is easier said than done, because every time you try to go anywhere in this game, we have to sit through an elevator loading screen. We get out, kick his spaceship's ass, Captain Sky Pirate Harry Potter Order of the Phoenix Games sacrifices himself to stop Skyheed. That guy's name is Skyheed? Damn. I bet he wishes his mother fell down the stairs while hitting her baby bump with a brick. Phoenix is dead. The awkward moment of, oh wait, I still have to do this for 30 seconds, even though I thought it was over. Skyheed is dead. Everyone is happy, especially Jack because Kira's crush died a horrible and painful death. Joke from Daxter. The end. Finito. Thank fuck. Why does this exist? I know why. Because adventuring on the edge of existence is a great idea. If only this game was in the style of Precursor Legacy, and I think we would have been fine. Instead, we get a game that's pretending to be open world by letting you explore all of these vast, empty spaces of nothingness by running back and forth, flying dumb spaceships, and generally being a boring piece of particle board. 
I remember seeing this on the shelf when it was first released, and looking at the cover art all confused and shit. Due to me being a stupid kid at the time, I didn't buy it. And that's a good thing, unlike this game. Jack and Daxter The Lost Frontier gets 4 out of 10. I do feel like this game is on the same level as Enter the Dragonfly, except here, I wasn't left feeling utterly furious at the fact that it shat all over a series I loved. I was just really, really annoyed by it, and that has to count for something, right? Well, that's the end of my Jack and Daxter series review. Until Jack 4's released. But anyway, I hope you enjoyed the video. If you did, be sure to leave a like, subscribe, and share. I'm Square Eyed Jack, and have a great fucking day. Thanks for watching.